Welcome grade 12 mindsetters to learn extra live grade 12 ma math literacy. Hey, that's what you're here for. He's here for math literacy. So let's do math literacy. I mean, what I think math literacy is a good thing to okay. start with. Yeah, no, it is. I, th I agree with you. How was your week, Kat? Great, thank you. It was, was it? awesome. And yours? Oh, no, I had a good week. Shame, I had a horrible incident occur in my classroom today. Tell me. Sad. There was this guy here and he came up to me and um, he said to me, his name was Jordan. And, and Jordan said to me, you know, so um, David's calling me a donkey. I said, oh, no, Jordan, that's terrible. <laughs> says, oh, he always calls me donkey. I said, why is he calling you donkey? He says, I don't know. He, all, he, all, he always <laughs> calls me <laughs> Okay, that's sad. Hey, I'm going over there while you talk to them about this thing. All right? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that, Peter. You guys know exactly how to get hold of us on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Our Twitter handle is at learn extra. And today you can even call us. And our phone number is 086. 6105 That's 086-105-8262. This number is also on our page. So if you forget it and halfway through the show, you're like, hey, I want to say hi to them, or rather, I want to ask them a question, you just pick up the phone and call us. It's right there. And on our Facebook page now, you can download lots and lots of information on our winter school, our boot camp. It's going to be awesome. So make sure that you are downloading from this instant the schedule, on what times, what lessons, and also the book, the winter school book, which has nice little questions on it for all of your subjects. doesn't even have to be math literacy. And but maths literacy is, is the, the best, yeah. I think yeah. So. Now, Kat, you always talk about yeah. that page. I never know what on earth you're talking about. So what we've done is we've got it on this big screen, and maybe yes. you can explain a few things to me. I'm going to ask you a few so. questions yeah, and, no, please and do. things like that. Okay, the first thing that jumps to mind is this funny figure here of 12,132. What does that that's, mean? That's, that's our greatest figure. That is the likes and how many people have come onto our page and have loved our page. That's that, that's that's the number right of there. So mm -hmm. we've got 12,132 people mm -hmm. out there who like mm -hmm. us. That's fantastic. That's, and that yeah. excludes the number of viewers who don't have or can't get on and yet who still watch then us. Then you anyway. still watch us, yeah. Wow, so that's fantastic. That and, makes me and they can still keep liking. So if you're at home and yeah. you want to like our page, you just press the like button and immediately the number rises. So call your friends, call your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, your aunts, your, even your granny if she has Facebook. Ask her to like this page. And what happens if they don't like it? Then, they, then they, there's no one like that in the world, there's unfortunately. No one like that in the world. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, here it says get all the winter school schedules. Yeah. What's that all about? That's about the winter school that will be happening from, what, the second? So you guys must go quickly and download the schedule where you can get the times and the slots where all the subjects will be taking place. All right, so that's from mm -hmm. the 2nd of July. Yes. And that's why For I'm going to be here on the 2nd of yes, July that's why 30, I think Yeah, it is. and oh, if we, we might right. call you and say don't come because we just don't like you, but it's still going to be carrying oh, on. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Not very nice at all. <laughs> okay. And download all these winter school books? Yeah, the winter school books has the schedule as well, and it has the questions and the lessons of what is going to be happening during the, during the show. Okay. And those are those great books. Yeah, hey, they, they're fantastic. They have questions, they have questions. Guys, Lesson those plans. books are a must. You yeah. just got to, got to try and get yeah. hold of it. In fact, um, they sell them so cheaply from yeah. Mindset that it's actually cheaper for you to buy them than download, then download them, them and print them. them. That's so true. It, it takes forever That's true. To print and remember today, the first five callers will also be getting these books for free, sent to you, your home. So make sure you give us a call. We, we'll be happy oh, to you. Oh, that's great. So give us yeah. a call, ask us a question on anything relating to mathematical yes. literacy, and we'll send of you course. one of these books. Yeah. Okay. And also, anything I just wanna, I I want to remind these grade 12s that they, if you want to ask a question, please ask it on the status or on the comment on the timeline and not in the inbox, because it's very hard for us during the show to run into the inbox and get your questions and then bring them back out. So just make sure that they're here so I can see them and I can think Throw them over to Peter, who will answer them in a flash of lightning, eh? Well, we hope so. Anyway. Yeah, let's hope so. Eh? Oh, let's hope <laughs> Thank so. you, Peter. All right, you must go sit down and yes. play with your computer thing. And I'm going to try and find out what are we doing today. And what we're doing today is we started this last week, eh? We started looking at a few questions which have come up in past papers. And so we thought we'd do the exact same thing again today. But 
Um, every now and then, I'm going to switch over to Kat and ask her if there's a question there. And if she has a question which you've got for me, then we'll try and attempt to answer it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, let's get started with today's uh, question. Each year, the Lighthouse Foundation presents a financial report to all its stakeholders. Here's the, uh, the um, financial report. It says, Lighthouse Funda Foundation financial report for the 1st of March 2008 to the 28th of February 2007. So, we've got a bit of income. We've got a few donations, a local donations of 78,240 rand. We've even got people overseas who've suddenly said, you know what, we've got to give some money to the Lighthouse Foundation. And they gave in 57,120 rand. We've been subsidized by the local municipality for 308,160 rand. Sure, I wish I lived in that municipality. So my total income is an amount of 443,520 rand. My expenses are salaries for part-time employees, 128,833 rand. Our telephone bill for that year was 15,571 rand. Sure, that phone bill is like for the year, it's like what mine is like for a month when my wife talks to my mother-in-law and, yeah. you know, and she tells her everything that's wrong with her with husband, you. with me. Oh, yeah. it's quite sad. Okay, 15,571. <laughs> Stationery and postage, 2,379 rand. Bank charges, 2,899 rand. And then there were services rendered to children. In other words, this foundation must have something to do with kids. They've given food parcels to the value of 178,200 rand. That's fantastic. Vegetable gardens, where they've given seeds and fertilizers, etc., 5,812 rand. They've donated school uniforms to the value of 10,047 rand. And other clothing to the value of 30,456. Their transport costs for the year have come to 22,822 rand, which means our total expenses for the Lighthouse Foundation, 397,019 rand. Okay, so what kind of questions are they going to ask me? Let's have a look at them. So, first one, use the information in the table to answer the questions. Write down the period of time covered by the financial report. So we're just going to jump back quickly. And guys, it's straightforward, hey? It actually tells us this. It says, from the 1st of March all the way to the 28th of February 2007. Gee, that is an easy question. But remember, it's a paper one, and we're trying to build up your confidence here. And this paper comes from, if I remember correctly, the... November 2008, Department of Education, Paper 1. Okay? So, a bit of an easy question, but again, it's to say, hey, does this guy know where to find information on any financial document? Right, our next question. We're going to have to flip backwards and forwards here. Name the Lighthouse Foundation's main source of income. What is their main source of income? Remember, it was from the local municipality of 308,160 rand. Right, my next question. So, so far, all this question is doing is it's just trying to say, let's find out, can they read this document? Can they extract information? That's all we're doing at the moment, okay? We are testing our students or testing you can you make sense of this document? Our final question for this part, or our, uh, the easy part anyway, express the subsidy from the local municipality as a percentage of the total income. Now, I'm going to go back to this because I'm going to forget these figures. So I'm going to do this question right here on this page over there. Our total income is 443,520 rand. Of that, the municipality has donated 308,160 rand. And so what we're saying to you is this. Okay, what percentage of the income has come from my local municipality? Now, soon as I see or hear or even think about the word percentage, the first thing that jumps in my mind is not bultong and chips, but rather a hundred times a hundred. So, that over 448,523 uh, um, times, 
a hundred. Now I'm not going to do that in my head. Why? My head's not big enough for that. So we're going to do it in the calculator and say 308,160 Rand over 443,520. We're going to multiply that now by a hundred and our answer is going to land up being 69,48%. 69,48%. In other words, of all the income that's given to me, 69,48, just under 70% of my income comes from the local municipality. So if something goes wrong with this local municipality, I tell you what, this foundation is only going to get 30% of its normal income. All right, our next question. And we're going to jump... Here we go. Calculate the average cost of one school uniform if 48 children received school uniforms. So we know we're going to have an amount of money that was for school uniforms, and we're going to divide it by 48 to find out the cost of one uniform. So let's go back and find that cost of those uniforms. So what we're going to say is this, right... Our school uniforms are 10,047 Rand. So I've got 10,047 Rand. Of that, is that right? Let's just check 10,047. Absolutely. We're going to divide it by how many school uniforms did we say there were? I've heard. You've forgotten. <laughs> oh, no, you know lots, lots. Lots and lots. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. That, f the help around this area is really bad. I've got a feeling it's 48. Let's just check this out quickly. <laughs> Yeah, if they That's what 48. I said, 48, 48, I said 48. Okay, me, me. so let's do it while we're up here. Um, we're going to say divide it by 48. How much is each school uniform? It's going to cost 209 Rand and 31 cents. Now just to have a look at our calculator over here. Can you see this figure 209.3125? Now folk, our answer is in Rands and whenever get an answer in rands we know the answer's got to be rands and cents okay so i know i've got to have two decimal places so where i see this figure of 209 rand 0.3125 i know i'm going to round it and say it's 209 rand and 31 cents okay great let's look at our next question our next question says this the overseas donations are from japanese businessmen Determine the amount in yen that the foundation received from overseas donations if one yen is equal to 0, 0, 08 South African rands. Okay, so we know one yen, okay, oh, let's get a pen, here we go. One yen, let's do that, is equal to 0, 0, 08 South African rands. rands. Okay, in other words, one yen is worth eight cents. Now, how much money did we actually get for the foundation? So we've got to just flip back quickly again and just find that page. Here we go. And this time you've got to remember it. All right, can you do that? Yes. Here we go. Overseas, we've got 57,120. All right, catch my local secretary right now. She's just writing that all down. So when I ask her, she's got the answers. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So now what we're trying to do, uh, here we are, okay, we know that we want to work out what 57,120 rand is. Now, folk, before I can work out what 57,000 is, I want to know what is 1, okay. So, how do I get 0, 0, 8 to 1? Now, I'm going to say this. To get that to 1, what am I actually doing? I am saying 0, 0, 8 times what gives me 1? Do you know what it is? Mm, no. Okay. Well, we're <laughs> going to say on my calculator, let's do it backwards. We're going to say 1 divided by 0, 0, 8, and we're going to get an answer of 25 over 2 or 12,5. So I know I've got to multiply this by 12,5 to get it to being 1. Is that right? That's it. Let's just double check that. So I've got 0 0.08 times 
multiply it by 12.5, and voila, I get one. one. Now remember, Kat, if I multiply one side by 12,5, I've got to multiply the, the next side by 12,5, and that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to say multiply this by 12,5. Now I know 1 times 12,5 is going to be 12,5. 12, yeah. In other words, guys, for every 1 rand, the Japanese are giving me 12,5. Yeah. Okay. Now, how do I get that 1 to be 57,120? I multiply by 57,120. What am I going to do here? I'm going to multiply by 57,120. So let's do that on our calculator. Out comes our calculator, and we're going to say, right, we've got 12.5. Multiply that now by, oops, by 57,120. And our answer works out to seven, 714,000 yen. So 700 and 14,000 yen. Okay. Sure, that sounds like a huge donation, eh? Yeah. They're saying, we're giving you 714,000 yen. And it's only 57,000. But thanks anyway for the <laughs> donation. Okay, now let's move on. The Lighthouse Foundation uses a vehicle to deliver the food parcels and for transporting the children. Give an example of one type of transport cost. Okay? What type of transport cost? Petrol? Yes. Maintenance? Yes. Tolls? Yes. Okay? These are all costs which contribute towards transporting things. And we say this every week, eh? but the cost of petrol. That petrol. Oy, 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 I think oy, oy. I'm going to start walking. Uh, I would too, but you know what? I don't think it'll be good for my health. I might lose <laughs> some of this wonderful physique. Oh, and, and you love that, eh? I love my physique, okay. absolutely. <laughs> okay, no one else does. My wife hates it, but you know what? But you love I'm it. Happy. That's right, all that comes. let's move on. <laughs> Calculate the cost per kilometre if 18,554 kilometres were covered. Okay, now I'm not going to come back to this page, so I'm going to ask you to remember this so figure for 18, me. 18,554 sure. kilometers. Okay, so let's just go back and find our table. So what we're saying now is this. How much are we spending per kilometer if my transport costs are 22,822? So I've got 22,822 in total, but of that money, that money covered how many kilometers? One no, 18,554. 554 54. kilometers. In other words, if I take my 22,822 rand, divide it by 18,554 kilometers, I will know how much each kilometer has cost me to travel. So we're going to push equals, and I get an answer of about 1 rand 23. In other words, every kilometer I travel is costing me 1 rand 23. What's costing me the 1 rand 23? Well, on average, the 1 rand 23 um, is for my petrol, it's for my tolls, it's for my maintenance, my servicing, all that kind of thing. It averages 1 rand 23 for every kilometer I travel. Okay. Any questions from the viewers at no this stage before yet. we move on? No, no questions, questions at all. Do we have any viewers? Today? Yes, we have lots of viewers, we have lots actually. Of viewers, but yeah. it seems you all know your work, which is absolutely fantastic. All right. But I'm sure while you've been revising, because some of you are busy writing exams this week, yeah. and some might be finishing up next week, because I think you break up I think the next following week, week yeah. in two weeks' time. And this is our last show. So if you've got a problem and you've been looking through your paper and saying, oh, I don't know how to do this, please let us know. Even if you say, you know, do you mind just covering, I don't know, the topic of probability, just, just cover one little question on probability, we'll do it. Or cover one little question on um, calculating interest, we'll do it for you. Got that? So just drop us a line. Kat, I think it's almost time Let's for a break. Let's break, yeah, so that you guys can gather all those questions, start typing them, and shoot them over to us, and we will answer them. See you after the break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. 
Belinda's just mentioned to us that this is our last show for this term. Remember that we'll be joining you again with live shows, Learn Extra live shows on the 16th of July. But this doesn't mean that we forget about you during the holidays, not at all. It just means that we'll be back with some boot camp. Yay! I'm very excited for some boot camp. And your boot camp will be starting on the, let's say, the second, hey? The it second. is the 2nd of yeah. July. Let's and in fact, we've got a live show at 1.30 on the 2nd yeah. of July. Yeah, and also because we love these metrics so much and we want them to ace everything, we've even got Saturday live shows just for you on most of the subjects, if not all. We're probably going to do all of them because we love you just that much. On Saturdays, remember from 9 we start with some maths and at 6 we end with some geo geography. Geo geography. Geography, that's it, eh? That's yeah. that subject, yeah, geography. So we'll be seeing you on Saturday. Remember, don't run away from us because we are here for you. Absolutely. Loads of subjects offered, folk, but of course the most important one being mathematical literacy. <laughs> All right. Before the break, we were looking at the Lighthouse Foundation and we we're looking at different questions. And we're going to pick up this question and we're going to work through it just very quickly. And then our no-catch received one or two little questions from viewers out there and we'll tackle some of those as well. Okay, let's have a look at this. The children who receive food are divided into four different categories. Table four below shows a percentage of children in each category. So, Table 4 says the Lighthouse Foundation beneficiaries for the period from the 1st of March 2006 to the 28th of February 2007. And they've got four different categories. Can you see these categories? Category A, B, C, and D. So, B, C, and D. Now, Category A says terminally ill parents. And they're giving 13% of um, the people who need money get it from uh, are given to a terminally ill parents, okay? 48% of the money is given to orphans living with relatives. 29% is given to child-headed households. What do we mean by child-headed households? We mean that there are no parents in the household at all, hey? And the house is run by a child itself. So obviously an older brother or an older sister is trying to run that household. And so the Lighthouse Foundation is giving them some money just to help them because obviously there's no income coming into that household. And finally, living in foster homes, they give 10% of their money to such children. Now... Let's have a look at our question. There are 1,712 children benefited from this project during the period of the report. Calculate exactly how many orphans living with relatives benefited from this project. Now, orphans living with relatives, 48% of the total children that benefited were those kids who were living with relatives. Now, if there are 1,712 children, we are going to try and calculate 48% of that amount to find out the exact number of children that benefited. So what we're actually saying is this. We want to find 48%, and remember guys, whenever I hear the word, see the word, or even think about the word percentage, I'm going to remember 100. So 48% is 48 over 100. And we're multiplying that now by the amount of kids, which is 1,712. And again, folk, we're not going to do the work, eh? Our calculator is going to do that work for us. Why? Because a calculator doesn't make a mistake, number one. And number two, because our parents spent money on the calculator, so <laughs> let's keep them happy and use it. Okay, so we've got 48% or 48 over 100, and we're going to now multiply that by 1,000. 712 kids all together and that is going to give me 821,86 kids. So 821, seven. sorry, 76, eh? 821,76 kids. 821,76 kids. Now I have a problem with that. Okay. And the problem that I have is how can you get comma 76 <laughs> of a kid? That doesn't happen, right? Even if they're tiny little children, you, they, you can't look at a little kid and say, oh, that's wonderful, hey? That's comma seven six of a human <laughs> being. Not true. That's a whole human being, no matter how small they are. So why did we get comma seven six of a question? 
or, or uh, comma seven six of a kid. I would say because these figures would have been rounded off. They would not have been uh, exactly 48%. It could have been 48,12% or 48,43%. And they've just taken those figures and rounded off and said, you know, 48% of kids. Okay? And that 48% gives us comma seven six of a kid. So where you started rounding off, maybe the data given was rounded off, and that's why our final figure is a weird one, where we got comma seven six of a kid. So I would go as far as saying, you know what, let's make that 822 kids have actually benefited from this wonderful, wonderful project. Right, our next question is this, and we had a, a viewer actually ask us for to do a, a bar graph, and it's come up quite nicely yeah. here, so we're actually going to do it. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So, what we've got, and the question is this, draw a vertical bar graph representing the data in table 4 on the grid provided. So, on our grid, if you look at all our data here, we've got too many ill peer, uh, parents, 13%, 48, 29, 10. And the question is saying, take all this information and instead of seeing it as a table, let's make it more graphic and draw it as a bar graph. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is if you look here at our bar graph, now guys, if they just give you a basic um, set of axes here, then you know that for any graph, you've got to have a title. You've got to have the name of my vertical axis. You've got to tell me what my horizontal axis is representing. Now, this exam was fantastic because the examiner gave it to you. You didn't even have to think about it. Look here. They've given us this graph and they've told us what the heading is. The Lighthouse Foundation beneficiaries for the period of the 1st of March to the 28th of February. Then what they've done is here is they've told us that this vertical axis is to do with our percentages. They've gone on to say this horizontal axis has got to do with the categories of the children that are going to benefit. That is fantastic. So all it leaves us to do now is to draw in the bars and tell the examiner what the bar represents. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. Now, my first category, Kat, you wrote it down earlier. Yes, that's terminally ill parents. Okay, so children with terminally ill parents. So I'm going to just put... Uh, T-I. T-I. Ah, terminally ill. All right, let's do that. And what yeah. was that percentage? 13%. 13%, eh? Hey? So if I look at my percentages like here on my axis, I've got 0, I've got 10, I've got 20, 30, I want 13%. There are 10 little lines between the 0 and the 10. There are 10 little lines between the 10 and the 20, which tells me, guys, that each little line represents 1%. I want 13%. Now I'm going to try and draw this as straight as I possibly can. So hold luck. Hold thumbs, rather. 10, 11, 12, 13 is over there, and there's my graph, okay? And I'm going to draw a line going down as well, and another one going down here, and I'm going to say that represents my terminally ill parents. Do I have to shade it in? I do not have to shade it in, okay? But I'm just going to do that. Why? Because I want to. All right, now, my next cat category, Kat, is... And that is... Um, orphans living with their relatives and that okay, is... so how are we going to do that? Say you, guys, by the way, I'm just abbreviating. Why? Because writing with this big pen is quite difficult yeah. and I've got to write in a small space. Now, when you write with a wonderful HB pencil or a wonderful pen, I nearly said big, but yeah. I'm not going to say big pen on TV. <laughs> okay, so with a wonderful <laughs> pen, if you write it, you can write out the whole thing. So you never abbreviate, hey? You are not going to write TR. No one will know what that is. Yeah. You're going to write... What are they going to write? Um, terminally ill parents. Terminally ill parents. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, but we're not. We're cheating we're, we're a little not, bit. Yeah, okay. What's my next category, did you um, say? Orphans living with their relatives. So maybe we oh, can write... Just put an R, hey? Yeah, well, relatives. Means relatives. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But you won't do that, eh? You will write out the whole thing. Okay. And how much percentage is that? That is 48%. Woo! Way up there, hey? 48%. And that's what we're going to do. 48 is over here. Okay, let's go. 48%. Let's draw another line over there. And another one going down here. Okay? And again, I'm going to shade it in Y just because I want to. 
There's right. a thicker shading pen there if you want. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, then I'll make a mess. But I'll try <laughs> to do that just now to keep you happy. Okay, okay. and then we'll shade much quicker. Awesome. Is that what you're trying yeah. to say? <laughs> are we rushed for time? I think we are. Okay, so there's uh, um, those living with relatives. What's my next category? The Kat? next category is child-headed households. Child-headed households. Yes, so okay. let's say, what are we say C for child. C for child. And what's my percentage on that? 29%. One? 29, just under the 30 mark. So let's do that again. I'm going to try and find a straight line. And it's just 28% over 29, there. 29, 29. 29. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go 29. This is why I'm shading in. So when I make a mistake, you, you can't can just see. just rub it out okay. there. So we'll go down there. And we'll go down there. Okay, you can see two lines, so I'm going to shade it in. Why? So that you can't see that I've made a mistake there. Okay, there we go. Shaded the whole thing, and how wonderful is that? And there's the next part of my bar graph. Okay, right. My final thing then is? Is children living with their foster parents. Okay, we'll make it an F, eh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> F for foster parents. And what's my percentage on that Ten percent. Ten exactly. All right, again, straight line. Here we go. 10% and we're going to do a line across, we're going to do a line down and another line down and then we're going to shade it in and you see there's a very thick pin. No, the next one, what, the your normal, where your normal my pin? My normal yes, pin is there. a nice Whoa, let's look at this. Oh, fuck, you know, that just brings <laughs> a tear to my eye. There it is. <laughs> okay, we can just color in. In fact, we could spend the rest of the show coloring in. It's quite exciting, this. All right, so there is everything shaded, and let's go back to a normal pen. That, guys, is my bar graph. Now, there are a few things I want to bring to your attention. First of all, my graph has a title. It tells me what my vertical axis is all about. It tells me what my horizontal axis is all about. You've got to do that in any test or any exam. For this question, they gave it to us. Fantastic examiner. You want to just meet him and hug him, all right? But with my bar graphs, take note that I'm dealing with bars, hence the name bar graph, and my bars are all got a space in between them, okay? So they're not touching each other, they're not linked to each other at all. And that is my bar graph. Okay, should awesome. we go on or should let's, we let's go, Let's go for questions? a break. Let's go for a break so go that we can break. get all the questions in. Okay, let's right? do that, and then let's I'll find that. some space, because I don't have much space, okay, no, so we fine. can do that. That's fine. Great, so let's do during that. this break, guys, remember, just consolidate all those questions and what you have learned, and we'll see you after this quick break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, from that quick, quick break. I can see all your questions streaming in. You're like, Peter, help me with this. Peter, help me with that. And you guys know that if we had five hours to sit here, we would answer every single one of your questions. But unfortunately, Mindset's a bit stingy with their time, so we have a little bit, you know, a little bit of time. So we'll try to answer what we can. But Peter, you know, because he's on the ball, he has some questions that cover, like, most of your questions. Because that's, that's how we have him here, and that's why we love him as well. Over to you, Peter. Sure. I don't know what you're drinking there, girl, <laughs> but it sounds wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Folk, we had a question. Do we know who this question came from? Do we have a name? Um, no, we don't have a name, but let's say it's me. Okay, well, it's actually not you, but one of our viewers gave us this question, and if we can find out who it is, that'll be absolutely great, because yeah. then we can send okay. you one of these books. And the question had to do with finance, and this was the question. Tom was presented with 400 Rand for passing grade 10, and decided to invest it to buy his own CD player. Calculate how much he will have after three years if he's paid an interest rate of 8% compounded quarterly. Okay, now... I'm not sure, again, on the name of the person who uh, gave us this question, but whoever you are, and, and Kat's looking for that now, but whoever you are, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this question into two parts. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cross out this quarterly, and I'm going to write yearly, and then we're going to do a question again, but then do it quarterly. Okay? OK, because if we understand the concept of interest uh, paid out yearly, it helps us understand the whole concept of quarterly. So okay, let's have a look at it. We've got a name if you want. Have we got a name? Who yes, Laveshni. Laveshni. Yes, OK, right. Laveshni. I don't know how you spell that. But love, I'll just love as in with the heart. OK. But, yeah. 
<laughs> no. Okay, L-U-V. Yeah. Right, Laveshni, great for calling. Thanks very much. And we haven't answered very many questions on uh, finance, so this is going to be a good one to look at. Now, the first thing you will know that if you get given a question on finance in the exam, you will be given the question, uh, the formula. Okay? And so we're going to use this formula, A is equal to P bracket 1 plus R to the power of N. We're pretending it's yearly for now, and then we'll do it again quarterly. Okay, so yearly, what we're saying is how much will he have in the bank if we invest 400 Rand at an interest rate of 8%. Now, how do we write 8%? 8% 8 is 8 over 100, isn't it? There it is. How do we ch write that as a decimal? Well, we in our calculator, we're going to say 8 divide it by 100, and we will get an answer of 0, 0, 8. So I'm going to write that, 0, 0, 8 percent, okay? Um, or 0, 0, 8, which means 8 percent. N means the number of years, and we're told it's for 3 years. So it's to the power of 3. Now, if we slap all that into my calculator, I should get the result for that. So we're going to say, okay, on my calculator, I've got 400, bracket, we put it saying 1 plus, my interest rate was 0.08%, and we are doing it for how many years did we say? For three years, okay, to the power of three, and my answer now is going to be 503 Rand 88. Look at the calculator carefully, we got 503,884. So rounding it, we've got 503,88. So it's basically 503 rand, comma, 88 cents. Okay. Right. Laveshni, I hope that helped you. But the real, your question is quarterly. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, quarterly. So what we're now going to do is say this. All right. So we're going to use the same formula, and I'm going to use a different color. Let's go pink. A is equal to, the amount I'm depositing is 400 Rand. 1 plus, now, my interest rate is still 0, 0,08. Okay, 0, 0, 0,08. My years are still 3 years. But we're going to do a little something different. Let's say I go to a bank. And I say to the bank guy, whoa, here's my money. What are you going to do for me? And the guy says, I'm going to give you 12% interest for the year. And I say, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay? And I take that money, give it to the bank, and say, look after for me. The end of the year, I'm coming back. I want my money, plus I want an extra 12%. Okay? After a month, I suddenly realize, oh, no, geez, a year's too long to wait. I'm going now. So I go off to the bank, say, I want all my money. Okay, and they give it to me, and I say, and I want my 12%. And they say, now hold on. We agreed that you would get 12% if you kept your money for a year. But you haven't done that. You've just kept it with us for a month. And a month is a 12th of the year. So because you've kept it with us for a month, a 12th of the year, we are going to give you a 12th of the interest. We're not going to give you that whole 12%. We're going to give you 12% divided by 12, because it's a 12th. We're only going to give you 1% interest. Okay? And that's kind of fair. That makes sense. Now, in the same way, uh, eventually, what's actually happened is, we get the bank saying we're going to give you 0,08%, but we're going to now calculate it quarterly. What is quarterly? It means we're going to do it four times a year. So after a quarter of a year, I'm only going to get a quarter of the interest, surely. I've got to do that, okay? So because I'm only keeping the money in there for a quarter of the year, I've got to get a quarter of the interest. It would be ludicrous to keep my money for a quarter of the year and expect all the interest. So we're going to say, well, that's the interest, but I'm going to divide it by four. Why am I dividing it by four? Because it's the interest, and I'm only getting a quarter of that interest. Now, how many times am I going to calculate that interest? Well, if I'm doing it every quarter of a year, for the first quarter, I've done it once. The next quarter, I'm calculating it again. 
the third quarter I'm calculating it again, and the fourth quarter I'm calculating it again. So I'm calculating my money four times in that year. Okay? Four times. So if I've got my money in for three years and I'm calculating it four times in a year, I'm going to multiply that by four. In other words, over three years, I'm calculating it for 12 times. Here's a little hint, a little clue. If I divide that by four, I'm going to multiply that by four. Later on, we could ask you monthly. And if it's monthly, we're going to divide the interest by 12 and times... By 12, the period of time, or the number of times I'm going to calculate that interest. So whatever I do over here, let me use a different color. Let's go the green route. Whatever I do here, I'm going to do this. So if I divide that by 4 times that by 4. Divide that by 12 times that by 12. Now, it's simple, hey? Now we've got our figures. We just take out our calculator and we work out our answer. So again, I'm going to say I've got 400. Uh, oops, let's go 400, bracket, 1 plus, now look what I'm doing, fraction button, 0 0.08 over 4, close brackets, to the power of what? To the power of 3 times 4, or to the power of 12, equals, and voila, there's my answer, 507 rand and 30 cents. Take note how we're rounding that off. So it's 507 rand 30 cents. 507 rand and 30 cents. Okay. Now the interesting to, thing to note here, Levinsky, is this. That if I do it quarterly, I'm going to land up getting more money than if I'm calculating my interest over uh, a whole year. All right? Because I'm calculating that interest a lot more times. If I calculate my interest monthly, I'm going to get even more of a figure because I'm calculating it a lot more times. If I calculate my interest daily, well, I'm going to get even more money because I'm calculating my interest 365 times a year. All right. I hope that's answered your question. I really do. Is there another question up there or should I? You can, you can carry on. For okay. Yeah. I know there was a question about it. By the way, yeah. incidentally, Levinsky, for asking us this question, I think there's a book there's coming a your book. way. And it's a fantastic book. It really is. And guys, we've spoken about this so often, but it's well worth getting. I'm getting one for every single student in my class for grade 10, 11, and 12. Okay. They're wonderful little booklets with a whole lot it? of past questions in it. Give it to you. Okay. Here I am back again. So here it is. It says mathematical literacy. Let me go right up there. Can you see it? Mathematical literacy, grade 10. But you're not grade 10, hey? You're grade 12. So it's grade 12 book. And they're fantastic with a whole lot of past papers, past questions, things to work through. And I think they actually give the answers in the back, if I'm not mistaken. All right? So it's well worth looking at. And it's also got our winter school program in it, and we might be working through some of these to help you and to guide you along the way. Okay. Right. One of our viewers asked an area question. Yeah, they did. Um, but before that, do you want to just do this quick one? Okay. Some viewers have been asking about time conversions and distance conversions. Okay, that causes problems. Yeah, hey? that causes right, a bit so of problems. So I'll read you this one. Okay. Um, could you guys please, it's from Tendo. Tendo. Tendo, yeah. Okay. Could you guys please help me with conversions of hours to minutes? Example, from three hours and 40 minutes, I think she said, okay. to one hour and 12 minutes. I don't understand that question. I think they're two different ones. So how do you, how do, you okay. do that? So what are they wanting to do? Convert it to minutes? Minutes. Okay. So if I've got three hours and 40 minutes and I'm wanting to convert it to minutes. Guys, there are two parts to this. Eh? I've got my three hours and I've got my 40 minutes. Okay. And we want to convert both of them to minutes. Well, the 40 minutes is easy. We've got 40 minutes is equal to 40 minutes. Three hours, now how many minutes in one hour? There's 60 minutes in an hour. So how many in three hours? Well, I've got three, I've got, uh, so that's 60, and another 60, and another 60. 60, 120, 180. How did I get that? I just said three times 60, okay? And I would land up then with an answer of 180 minutes. Now, add them up, we're going to land up with 220 minutes.
straightforward. That's it. Okay, is that what they were trying yes, to ask? Yes, that's, that's And it. then this one as well, they also asked us another one. What was it? One hour? One hour and 20 minutes. One hour and 20 minutes. Okay. Now, did they want that as hours or as minutes? I think this one as hours. As hours. Yes. Okay, great. So now we've got another question where we've got hours and minutes, and we're telling you to convert it into hours. Okay, so what does that mean? That means I've got one hour and I've got 20 minutes. Now, one hour in hours is one hour. There's nothing hard about that. We all understand that, okay? What is 20 minutes? How do I get minutes in two hours? I'm going to divide by 60. So I'm going to say 20 minutes divided by 60. And let's see what our calculator actually gives us. So what we're doing now is we're saying, right, I've got uh, 20 minutes. We're going to divide it by 60 minutes to convert it to hours. Oh my goodness, let's go again. 20 divided by 60, and we get an answer here of one third. One third is 0, 3333 recurring. So I'm going to write that then as 0, 333. Okay, 0, 33 hours. Okay, which adds up to one and a third hours or one comma three three hours awesome okay. and that's how we convert hours and minutes into hours yeah do you want to do one more sandra has one or do you want to carry yeah on tell us what does sandra let's see has. what sandra says she has a good one yeah okay so here's the question mr naidu travels at an average speed of 110 kilometers per hour Right. They, they depart at 8.15. Right. And plan to arrive in Johannesburg at 2.30. In the afternoon. Yes. Okay. Determine whether they arrive at their destination at the predicted time if they are traveling at the distance of 153 kilometers. So they want to travel 153 Three kilometers, kilometers, yes. Travel at 110 kilometers an hour mm -hmm. and leave at 8.15 in the morning to 2.30. 2.30 Okay. Are you sure it's 153? That's, it's 153, yes. 153 she got back to us with 153 kilometers. Okay. Well, guys, straightforward. Hey, you don't even need a calculation for this. If I'm traveling 110 kilometers an hour, it means after one hour, I've traveled 110 kilometers. After two hours, I've traveled 220 kilometers. So I'm already way past this. I don't even need two hours to finish this journey. So if I'm starting at 8.15 in the morning, by 10.15, I'm already there mm. long before that. So will I make it by 2.30 in the afternoon? Oh, absolutely, you will. For way sure, before guaranteed. That. Yeah. Okay? All right, Weird. that's just a bit of logical sense there. Yeah. But notice how we're breaking it up. But a great question, Sandra. Thanks very much. Okay. Another one? Um, no other one. No, no other, other one at this here. stage. Okay. This stage. We did have some viewers who wrote in, uh, and a number of viewers said, hey, we're battling with area, or yes. hey, we're battling with volume. Can you help us out? Now, guys, area, and, and we've done quite a bit on this, but it, area, the one important thing to remember is this, and with volume, you will always be given the formulas, and that is a huge, huge sigh of relief. Because any question to do with area or any question to do with volume, they will say calculate the area and then they give you a formula. And by give, giving you that formula, you can use that formula, apply it and actually get to your answers. So here's a great question that I gave my grade 11s the other day. It's actually based on a true story and that's it is true, so it's absolutely fantastic. So I went camping, all right, with a caravan, and, and my wife and I went camping, and then we remembered we forgot the jam, okay? And I've got to have jam. I love jam, all right? Jam is like chutney to me. I put jam on my curry, jam on my bread. Jam, jam is my life. Absolutely love it. So we dashed out to the shop, and we bought a tin of jam, right? Now, I'm going to make up these dimensions. I've got to try and remember them. So we got, and there's our tin of jam. Absolutely wonderful tin of jam. That looks like a frot tin, but we'll pretend it's a tin anyway. There is my tin of jam. And the tin height was round about that high. Now, how high is that? Round about uh, 15 centimeters, maybe 12 centimeters. Let's make it 15 centimeters. So 15 centimeters high. And the tin's diameter was round about, I would say, if that is the radius 10, round about 5 centimeter radius. Okay? So my radius is 5 centimeters. Now, 
That was the tin we bought. The problem is, as you will know, when you go camping, you can't open a tin of jam and leave it. Why? Because millions of ants climb into this tin. And so what we needed was we needed a nice Tupperware container, right? Nice plastic container. And we found one. But it was in the form of a rectangular prism, okay? In other words, there was my rectangle, okay? Uh, let's do the base first, all right? So here's the rectangle. And uh, it was, in fact, I'm really making a mess. Obviously, art is not my favorite, draw, favorite uh, subject, okay? There she is over there. And this had a uh, length of 10 centimeters, round about 5 centimeters wide, so it was quite small, and 8 centimeters high. And my wife said to me, will the jam fit into that container? Okay, now this is a volume question, right? So will the volume of jam in my tin fit into the volume of space in my Tupperware container. And so what we needed to do was, I needed to calculate the volume of that tin, calculate the volume of this Tupperware container, and obviously I want this volume to be greater, I want the volume of my rectangle to be greater, because if it's greater, it means the jam can fit in there. If it's small, I'm going to have a little bit of jam left over. So let's see what happens. Now, if you get a question like this in the final matric exam, then remember you will be given a formula. So my formula here is going to be volume is equal to pi times r squared times the height. The volume for this prism, volume is length times breadth times height. So pi, and another thing the exam will tell you, because all examiners have been instructed to do this, is they will tell you that pi is equal to 3,14. So I'm going to say 3,14 multiply by the radius of the tin, which we said was 5 centimeters, and we're going to square it. Why? Because the formula tells you to square it, and when the formula tells you to do something, guys, it's like your wife telling you to do something, you just do it. Times the height. What's the height of my tin? It's 15 centimeters. Okay. Now we're going to find the volume of this rectangular um, prism. The volume is going to be the length, which is 10 centimeters, times 5 centimeters, times 8 centimeters. So let's do this. On our calculator, we are going to say we've got 3.14 multiplied by 5 squared multiplied by 15. Okay, and we get an answer now of 1177,5. 1,177,5. Okay, so 1,177,5 what? Centimeters cubed. Why cubed? Because we're dealing with volume. Now let's see if what the volume of this container is going to be. And we're going to say, right, on our calculator, we've got 10 times, let's just shift this to the side, 5 multiplied by 8, and we're going to land up here with an answer of 400. So I've got 400 centimeters cubed. Okay, now guys, is my jam going to fit in my container? No, it's not. Why not? Because the volume here is a lot greater than the volume over there. Kat, we've run out of time You've again. Run out Another of time. day has come and gone. I'm going to miss next week. I know. And I'm going to be sitting and I'm saying, oh, wow. I but know. I will be back Me on the too. 2nd of July. Yeah. And the show will be back on the 16th of July. So until then, remember there's boot camp. It's a great boot camp, guys. You have to, have to be here with us. And remember your books as well. Download them whenever you want, wherever you want. And we will be here for you. Remember to learn more and learn extra. And we'll see you on the boot camp. Bye.